Hello, and in this video we're going to go over some CSS basics. So in the last video uh, we did some stuff on HTML and pretty much the basics of HTML and this lesson is going to be about CSS. So to start off with, uh, I'm just going to create a new file. So I'm just going to uh, do Command N in this case. You could go to File New or however you're going to create a new file in your text editor. And before I write anything in, I'm just going to go ahead and save it uh, in the same directory, in the same location as my HTML file, index.html, and I'm going to call it style.css. Now the .css extension uh, it stands for Cascading Style Sheets, just as we're learning CSS, so it's .css, learning CSS, just as learning HTML, .html, and we can save it like this um, to make it a CSS file. So I'm just going to save it in the same directory, that's quite important. And I'm not going to write anything yet, so let's go back to our HTML file. And first of all, we want to link our style.css external CSS document because there are various method methods of uh, linking your CSS. And to link this, we open, uh, we, we start making it because this is a tag. And this is the link tag. So we say link and we say rel equals style sheet uh, in quotes. And in case you didn't know, when we say something equals something, after starting a tag. This is called an attribute. So we're setting an attribute, in this case the rel attribute, to a value. So rel equals style sheet and then we're going to say href um, and we're going to set that to style.css and then I'll go over what that means in a minute and then we do slash because this is I've forgotten the name of it but it's one of those tags that doesn't actually have a closing tag. It's kind of an open-ended tag um, which doesn't need an end so we have a slash at the end of the tag and then we close the tag. So let's just save this. Now what an href is, is you'll see uh, the word or the phrase href thrown around quite a lot when you're doing HTML and CSS and it's a hyperlink reference so it's pretty much just the, um, the location of another document or file. So for example when we're doing hyperlinks which are basically just links to different web pages or different resources then we'll use a tag, I'm not going to say which tag it is yet, and then we're going to set the href to the location of that document. But in this case, because we're saying the relation is a style sheet, so that's what this thing we're linking to is, it's a style sheet, and the location of it compared to our current document, because whenever you give an href, it's um, relative to the current document, unless you give it a fixed path, but never mind about that. Um, so style.css, so it's just going to look in the current directory for a style.css and it's going to link it as a style sheet, which is exactly what we wanted to do. Uh, note that we used to have to specify that the type equals text slash CSS, uh, however with HTML5 and kind of modernness, this isn't necessary, so I'm trying to teach you uh, the most up-to-date stuff as possible, so that isn't really necessary in the stuff we're going to do, we can just literally write it like this. So now we've included the style sheet, uh, everything inside the style sheet should be applied to our document, which is brilliant. That's exactly what we want to happen. Um, before we actually start going on about the CSS, if we just comment out this, in fact, let's not comment out because I haven't told you about comments yet. Let's just um, cut this line out for a minute. Let's say we want to specify our CSS in another way. So one way is we can use the style tag in our head section, and anything. Oops. See, saying head sections throw me off. But uh, inside the style section, in our head section, if we do it like this, we can specify um, CSS here. So we, we can write whatever CSS we want here. And that will have the same effect as writing it in style.css. Uh, however, if you have a lot of pages that are going to use the CSS, uh, and just generally it's considered better practice to use an external CSS file. So external is the way I recommend to do it, and not using these. Uh, these are perhaps if you really quickly want to test something, and you don't have to bother setting up all this uh, linking. And also, yeah, the last way we can go over doing it is we can use something called a style attribute. So I've told you what an attribute is already. We can go to our strong tag and we can say style equals, and then in quotes, we can give it some stylings. So we can just say color red or whatever CSS we want to apply to it in there. But again, I wouldn't really recommend that because it's not... Um, uh, it's not, um, you can't really apply, if we then wanted to change this and apply it to everything with a certain class, I haven't gone over classes yet, um, then it's not expandable, it's not scalable, it's not a good thing to do. So try and use external CSS files wherever possible. Anywho, we've linked our style the CSS file, let's go ahead inside of it and let's just apply some styling. So 
uh, the first thing you're probably going to want to do in CSS um, document is we're going to go probably apply something to our body section. So we're going to type body and then some curly brackets and we're going to specify any CSS stylings um, for the body section inside these curly brackets. Note that it's always good to be indented there, my text editor has done it for me. But this thing here that says body, this is called a selector and pretty much this is just specifying the area which we want this uh, this rule of CSS to apply to. And we can specify as many as we want of these, so if we then want something with a strong tag, all we do is type strong, and then boom, all the CSS styling in here is going to apply to our strong tags. Let's just go back to our body for a minute. Now, at the moment, we don't really know how to set anything in CSS, apart from I vaguely kind of told you the color property, but um, I didn't tell you what it does. So. If we use color, and you'll see my amazing text editor is putting a semicolon there for me because it knows I want one. And again, American spelling. If you're not American, you have to use that spelling. And color, and we set it to a color such as, let's just type red. Now, what the color property does is it sets your text color. That's, it's that simple. So we're setting our text color, and remember this is called the property, to the value, that's what this thing's called, the value of red. So if we just go ahead and save this, oh by the way this whole thing here um, the setting color to red, all of that bit um, collectively is called a declaration. So we can set multiple declarations if we wanted to. Um, so this is one declaration, this is another declaration. Obviously in this case it's completely useless. In fact let's keep this just to show you something. So we have color red and then after it we set the color to blue. So what is it, is it supposed to play this color as red or the color is blue? Ugh. So if we go back to our page and we'll see it's displayed as blue now, why is it chosen to do that? Let's go back into our text um, text editor. Now, what this is, is this is because CSS takes the stuff lowest down in the document and it prioritizes that, and this becomes very important when you're doing more complex stuff. But I didn't really mean to show you that. That was just kind of, actually, I can show them that while I'm here. So we want to set the color to red. If we go to Safari, we'll see that's red. Cool. Note that we can set other forms of color, such as hex. I think I vaguely went over this. So if I want to set it to FFCC00, You'll see that's a goldish color, and that's appeared goldish like that. So the color property um, property <laughs> property is a very useful one for setting the text color. Um, I don't really want to go over too many properties because the whole idea of these lessons, um, of these tutorials, is that I kind of show you them over a range, and this is just the basics showing you how we can apply some styling. So I'm sorry I keep not giving you something you can really work with. I want to kind of progressively move on with this um, to kind of enhance your learning the most. And if we just quickly go back to our index, so I quickly want to teach you another bit of terminology, which is, whoops, which is the parent and child. So if you didn't know, this isn't important quite yet, but I feel I should teach you it before I start blabbering on about it in some later lessons, and you won't understand what the hell I'm on about. Um, a child is something that's encompassed by its parent. So for example, the body element. I haven't gone over the, uh, the phrase element either. The body element or the body section is the parent of this strong section. The so body, is, in this case, is the parent of strong, just like head is the parent of this title, and head is also the parent of this link. And if we had some div tags, I'm not going to tell you what they do. I keep doing this. I should really stop using things I haven't told you about. And then we had stuff in here, such as we had strong high in here. In this case, uh, this strong high, this strong element, is a child of this division, of this div tag, which is a child of the body section, which is a child of the HTML document. Now also, uh, I've, said the I've said the phrase element a few times. Now, I don't really like using that phrase um, too much. I'm not sure why, I just don't feel that it properly represents it. But an element is pretty much just an individual component of a page. Um, so for example, you could say, if we had an image, oh my god, I just realized I haven't told you how to do images. Um, it's, it's an individual component of a page, you, you understand that, right? So, pretty much, that's the end of our CSS basics, and hopefully we can progress with learning some more properties for styling and some more uh, markups. We can actually add different, uh, yeah, different elements to our page. There we go, I managed to use the word elements. Hopefully I understand what it means now. Um, so that's the end of the CSS basic lessons, and have a nice day.